Take me to Castle Grayskull, many faces, where I will slay He-Man. Never Skeletor. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. I know a lot of you like that I have the Castle Grayskull behind me, but I did not mean for you to see me playing with the He-Man figures. I still do that from time to time, but listen, please... Don't tell anyone about this. It's really embarrassing. I, I didn't know that I had the video camera on. So, wait, what's that? You're go uh, please, don't listen. Don't. Uh, uh, what? Your sales are slow? Yeah, okay. So, if I, if I give you five, five tips on how to improve your slow sales, you won't let anyone know about that? All right. All right, five. Five, just five? You just need five. Uh, okay, all right, five. I could give you five. I mean, I don't really have this planned out, so it's probably going to be a quick video, but uh, as long as you don't let anyone know about, uh, you know, the He-Man figures there. I mean, I don't mind displaying the castle, but I'll give you five tips. I mean, that's pretty, I could come up with five off the top of my head. All right, so that's the deal. So let's see. Your sales are slow. And so you're kind of blackmailing me to give you give you five tips. But all right, let's start at um, number five. All right, we'll throw out number five. Number five would be you definitely need to make sure that you have a competitive price for your item. And a lot of people mess this up. They get an item that they think is good for sale, like they'll find this... Uh, you know, Donkey Kong toy here, and they'll just say, oh, well, that, that you know, that's really a cool toy, and uh, I'll just put that up, um, you know, should go for like 50, and so you put it up 50 bucks. You don't bother to do the research on, you know, what it's most recently sold for, and if you did, you would find that it never sells for more than $29.99, so there you have it up for $49.99. You're wondering why People aren't buying it. You've even done things like um, you've promoted it. You've, uh, you know, have either cheap shipping or free shipping. Um, you know, everything else. you got great pictures, white background, and it's just not selling. And um, you also don't realize that your competitors who have either better feedback or the same feedback as you are selling that for $24.99, some for $27.99, and that sort of thing. So... It does take a little extra time to do the research on the completed solds and on what your current marketplace is for the items, but it is well worth the minimal time investment that that takes to make sure you have a competitive price. Now, to have a competitive price, you also have to make sure that you source low so that you could absorb the shipping costs if you do free shipping. And you could forget the free shipping for a moment. If you could also, you need to be able to absorb, you know, the, the various seller fees that are involved as well. So uh, while also having at the lowest price. So that's important. Now don't have it for the lowest price if your competitor's item is damaged. Like if it's missing one arm or one leg or, you know, if the competitor's uh, feedback uh, is, is terrible, you know, don't put yourself less than that person. But all things being equal, Make sure you have the lowest price. All right, wait, what? I got to speed it up. You want it quicker? Um, okay, all right. I'll try to. I'll try to get to the points a little bit quicker. So uh, number number two, I would tell you is that you want to make sure you sell things that people want. So you could go out and get a really great deal, for example, uh, if you do clothes on uh, Croft and Barrow shirts, and you could list those and not realize that the market is flooded and the sell-through rates for those are terrible and they rarely move. Or you could spend your time investing in better sourcing so that you pick up maybe um, Robert Graham shirts. That's something that Casey Paris likes, Rockstar Flipper. If you're watching, what's up, Casey? Um, those, those sell very well, have a much higher sell-through rate, okay? So you have to make sure when you're outsourcing that, again, you do your research and check the comps and look to see how often has this item that I'm about to pick up, how often has it sold? Is it is it generally selling when it's up or is it generally not selling? And then again, what's my competition for it? Do I, do I have 500 people who are trying to sell the same thing or am I the only one who has it or are there only a couple other people that I have to compete with? So the more narrow you could get your, um, your, your kind of niche area that you're selling in, uh, the, more, the more you can narrow that down and have, um, have good items that people actually want, that they desire, 
then that is very important. See, a lot of times people say list, 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 list. And that's only part of the solution because if you keep listing things people don't want, it's not going to move. If you keep listing things that people do want, but your price is absolutely through the roof, you're still not gonna make sales. So it's not just list, list, list. It's list, 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 but you have to list smart. So that's number two. Number three, open up to best offers. You have to open your listings up to best offer. Now, not literally everyone, so you might get to a point, we'll use this doll again for example, where you have it up for maybe at some point, uh, you know, $24.99 and you just decide that's the lowest I can go on it based on whatever you sourced it for and how much you have to, you know, get involved with shipping. And that's it. That's your rock bottom point for that. And that's okay to buy it now. But for a lot of your items, you should have best offer enabled. Again, you need to be able to source low to be able to um, you know, adjust for that you're gonna have some best offers come in. Don't think that if you have best offer enabled that that means everyone's going to send you offers. That's a very, very common mistake that people who are new make. They think, oh boy, I don't wanna do that because no one's gonna just buy it. Now I'm gonna have to lower my price on every item. Not true. Significant percentage of people will buy the item, buy it now, even if you have best offer enabled, but there will be people who don't want to use buy it now. They want to feel like they get a deal. So increase your price a little bit at the beginning if you can, while also keeping your price competitive. And you know, no, I could take a you know a couple bucks off or something like that to make a deal with somebody. Okay, uh, so that's number three. All right, so you want five tips, right? You want five tips. So I got to come up with two more. Um, okay. Another one, make sure that you use your titles properly and your categories properly. Put things in the right category. Sometimes you'll find by accident that you, or sometimes eBay even does this. They accidentally, uh, if some kind of glitch happens and you find out that your uh, item that's supposed to be in the toys and dolls uh, category winds up going in the automotive area. Well, that's going to affect it. It's going to affect who's going to see it. So make sure you check that. Look at your view count. And uh, I said this on Instagram the other day, my Instagram account at prime underscore time underscore treasure. Make sure you go check me out there. I put up a lot of videos there every day with all sorts of tips. I did like three of them yesterday. So uh, go check that out. But make sure that you're putting things in the right uh, in the right category and that you're using your title properly. Um, so, for example, let's say, um, you know, I sell comic books. If you're selling comic book and you have Spider-Man number 356, don't just put Spider-Man 356, put Spider-Man 356, Marvel Comics, maybe there's a particular character involved in that story, put the character's name in there, things people would search for. Is it a first printing? What condition is it in? Is it near mint? Those types of things. Try to max out your title as best as possible until you completely exhaust all words. They're there for you, they're free. Use them because you could catch people into your listings with uh, uh, with search. And uh, one thing that is uh, also related to uh, price that I didn't really mention earlier, but they all kind of go together um, is, you know, you could do things like making sure you're uh, either um, you could run a promotion or a sale, or, you know, you don't always have to advertise that it's a sale. You can just naturally lower your price each week if things are moving. If your item is not moving after a week, there's some kind of issue. Either it's not popular enough that people just wanna grab it within that first week or your price is too high or some combination. So keep monitoring and adjusting price, not by a ton, but by a little bit each week until you get to that point where you start to notice a bunch of watchers on it and stuff like that. And uh, then you could lower it even less each week because you could see there's more interest generated on it. So that also has to do with price. Kind of like a little bonus there I'm throwing out at you there. Um, Number um, number five, uh, and this one is uh, this one's real important, okay? And people who are experienced sometimes fall into these uh, into these traps. Um, if you're diversifying into other areas, I just talked about this on Instagram yesterday, and it sort of hit a chord with people, so I figured I'd mention it here. If you're diversifying into other areas, you could sometimes get too caught up in that that you start leaving what your specialized natural niche area is. For example, if um, I want to start getting into tools, this is a real thing for me, I really want to start getting into tools more, and I start going out and buying a bunch of tools and start listing a bunch of tools like this, 
Um, well, that's a new marketplace I'm trying to penetrate, and I don't know that as well as comic books. For me, like for you, it might be clothes, and maybe you're trying to get into comic books. Like I know uh, Costa yesterday uh, contacted me, and he bought a whole bunch of comic books because he's trying to get into that. But it's a new area for him, and everyone's going to have new areas to try to branch into. But if you overindulge yourself in that and start leaving what your main area is where you have the most expertise where you know to market best and you know where things should be priced and exactly what they'll flip for and what the most popular items are go back to that go back to that thing and start focusing on just listing that stuff for a day or maybe two days and you will see your sales start coming in as long as you're doing the other things that I mentioned okay you can't have the price crazy high you know, that sort of thing. You have to make sure it's in the right category, have a good title, that sort of thing. But get back to basics. And um, you know what? I'll tell you what. Here's what I'm going to do. I was just going to do five of these. I'm going to do one more for you just as an extra special prime time bonus. And here's what I need you to do. Stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. Start accounting for how much time you are spending during the day doing things that are detracting from your business. Okay, so if you find yourself um, watching too many YouTube videos, for example, if you find yourself getting caught up on Facebook arguments. Now, you know, YouTube isn't necessarily a waste of time if you're learning stuff from it and you're getting, uh, you know, good points that can help you with your business. But if you're sitting around watching too much TV, watching too much Netflix, and I'm not telling you not to do that stuff, I do that stuff too, but make sure you've accomplished your main goals first. Like if you need to get five listings done during the day, get those five listings done first, hit your goal, then do that other stuff. Don't not, what I'm talking about is don't not get to those five listings because you spent too much time wasting it on off-task activities. If you find that off-task activities, especially social media, your phone is like one of the main things that could take you off, put your phone aside, and I've talked about this before, but even if it's dinging, blinging, whatever it's doing, shut it off, lower the volume, or tell yourself, I'm not going back to that thing that's distracting me until I hit those goals. And it could definitely be tough to do. I get notifications all the time on YouTube, on Facebook. People are asking me all sorts of stuff on Messenger. And I try to be responsive quick, but at the same time, I have a business to run and I have to make sure I run it. So I will get back to everyone. I will do that type of stuff. But sometimes I have to just tell myself, let it sit for 10 minutes. Let it sit for 15 minutes, half hour, an hour. Get back to it later. You have to, have to make sure you're taking care of your business. So those are the tips. I hope that is sufficient enough for you that we could just kind of keep this on the down low. So if that's all right, let's just do that. You know, I have a job and all this stuff. I don't need this stuff getting out into the public. So we'll just, uh, you know, keep this one between us again. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. So don't tell anyone else about this video. Again, just keep it on your hard drive. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I'll, uh, you know, I'll come back, you know, for, a, you know, another, I know I have to do that estate sale follow-up video. So I'll, I'll do that on the tips. So don't worry. I remember that. I'm going to do that. And uh, that's about it. So, uh, but I would appreciate if you do hit the like button for me and if you do subscribe to the channel, I mean, that would help me out kind of in exchange for the, for the tips here. Um, and, and if there's uh, other tips that you know of, you know, you can let me know that as well. You know where to leave that information down below. Check out down below, by the way, I do have a lot of interesting um, links for you to go check out. Lots of other places where I've gone and done interviews. Uh, lots of um, things that could help you out for your business in terms of affiliate links, supplies, that sort of stuff. So there's lots of interesting things down there. Go check that out. Uh, and make sure, by the way, you come and follow at my uh, Facebook group. Join that, the Reselling Resource Center. I'm doing a giveaway uh, this week for 3-inch tape gun and 3-inch uh, packing tape, which will be absolutely awesome for your business. So check that out. That The link's down below. It's called the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. Uh, you'll love it. There's so many activities. I can't even get into it now, but it's all free and will all help you out. So uh, that's about it. And I'll see everyone at the next video. Take care, everyone.